Hey everyone, hope you're well. Haven't done one yet, but I thought I'd give you a weekly summary, basically where we are in terms of our stocks that I've picked so far. I thought it would also give us a chance to focus on any hot topics from the week, such as GameStop, uh, what's going on with the SEC at the moment with the penny stocks, and whether it's going to be a crash or a correction. And if you're only really interested in one thing that I'm going to talk about, then I've put the segments in the comments area. If you go down there, you can click and go to exactly which bit that you're interested in. But hopefully you enjoy the video. I am going to do this every single week as a weekly roundup, as a kind of look back through the week, what happened, try and dissect it, and then look forward to next week and what's coming up and what should we do. So, as you may have guessed from the intro slide, what are we going to talk about this week? Well, first of all, GameStop. It kind of kicked off again, and I caught the right wave at the right time, and I got extremely lucky. So on Wednesday night, I saw that GameStop was going up, and it was going up pretty, pretty fast. I was trading it on the way up, and I'd made around 1,500 already on that. But then you may be aware that the New York Stock Exchange started halting trading. So I think it was around quarter to nine UK time. I put around £12,000 onto GameStop with the hope of doing a kind of short-term trade. And my plan was to get out before nine, have a nice night's sleep and chill, hopefully with another grand or two in my pocket. So what happened next turned out to be the best mistake of my life so far. The New York Stock Exchange then halted trading and my funds were locked in. There was nothing I could do. As soon as it went into aftermarket session, it went down 12% straight away. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? I'm about to get my money halved. But then out of nowhere, it rallied and it really, really started motoring. And it actually went up to $200 at one point. I bought at 90. I can't describe how I was feeling. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. But essentially, I love GameStop. I love what's happened with it. Power to the players indeed. I owe Keith Gill a lot. And to be totally honest, I love the story and what's happened here. It's changed a lot of people's lives. And it wasn't until I held overnight that I felt exactly what it meant to be part of the GameStop movement. And as a result of getting extremely lucky with GameStop, what I've decided to do is split some of my funds apart. And with all the volatility going on in the US market, I've decided to reinvest in the UK, which I don't think is fully recovered from Brexit and certainly hasn't fully recovered from COVID. So over the next few weeks, I'll be doing a few more videos on UK stocks as well as US stocks. So outside of what's been happening to me, there's been some interesting movements in the SEC, and that's the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US. They've announced that they're looking into around 15 penny stocks and some of the transactions that have been taking place, because let's be honest, there has been a hell of a lot of pumping and dumping over the past few weeks. And another key part of this weekly catch-up We'll be looking at whether this is a correction or a crash that's occurring and what is the difference between those two and what could we do as investors to help mitigate some of the risks that come with either scenario. So first of all, before we move on to discuss any of these topics in a little bit more detail, I just want to check in on the master tracker and see what we're up to because it's important with anyone on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit to make sure you hold them to account because if my picks aren't good enough, then I need to do analysis and understand exactly what went wrong so I can get better in the future. So here we are on the master tracker. Essentially here, we've got three at the top. So Active Energy Group, Nuva Mon Graphite, and Electrovia that I'd initially done Reddit reviews on. So written reviews on Reddit and with a price point in column A here at the time of the review. And if we look at column F here, this is essentially price at the end of the week just finished with column H here giving us our delta in terms of a percentage. So I think the first thing to mention here is the market generally over the past few weeks has seen quite a significant downturn. So actually, it's really good when we look at this and find that most of the picks that I've made so far have been fairly resilient to that. And it's actually really good here to see the company that I said to sell, Enphase Technologies, has gone down 30%. So if you haven't watched that video, I suggest that you do. Because I'm not sure if a company like Enphase Technologies would survive a major crash if that were to happen. Just to focus on the two that I have done video reviews on. Nuvamon Graphite, $1.25 when it first picked. And Ixtel, $1.44 when first selected. Ixtel's dropped slightly. However, it did hit nearly $2 during the week. And whilst I hadn't invested in Ixtel at the time of doing the review, I did successfully trade them throughout the week during the UK evening session. And just kicking back to Nuvo Mon Graphite, I haven't re-entered on that position yet. I'm still keeping an eye on them, but it's dropping to the kind of zone where I think it's really, really hot now and a definite buy. The Electro Vias also had some really good news out recently, so they've had some good financial results. So I haven't done a video review on Electrovia and I'm not currently planning to. However, I will put a link to the Reddit post that I did just in case you want to read it in the comment section. So let's get into some of the fun stuff. Let's talk about GameStop and what happened in the week. So here you can see two screenshots. One on the left is my entry position into GameStop. So around quarter to nine UK time on Wednesday night. So I actually ended up buying nearly 13k of GameStop during this session. So I had been trading it successfully throughout its session. But at the point of buying this, I'd hope to be out before nine o'clock hoping to make maybe one, two thousand pounds. However, what happened was the New York Stock Exchange, due to volatility on the stock, decided to suspend trading, which meant I was locked in for a sleepover. There was nothing I could do other than wait 
and watch the out of hours price whether it would go up or down straight away it went 12 percent down out of hours and i was like oh no i'm gonna lose everything I thought it was going to be a case of minus 50% overnight. But what happened next in the out of hours session completely changed my investing world. It went from minus 12% up 100% positive. I doubled my money. Now being in the UK, I'm not sure any of us are actually able to trade out of hours. And if anyone is from the UK and is able to trade out of hours on US stocks, please let me know how you do it because I'd be really, really interested. Anyway, one awful night's sleep later and it was the next day. And on the Thursday, it was trading anywhere between kind of 120 up to 170, 150. And my target, because I bought in around $91, if it goes for anything over 150, I was absolutely over the moon by it. So rather than watching it every five seconds, I put a sell limit on. And I put that sell limit at $150. And what happened was it actually ended up selling for $160 each share. So what you can see here is I sold a bulk lot of 50 shares in one go and a partial fill of 21 trades, which basically means there was 21 different chunks of trades that went through to complete my whole order. And as a result of selling this 50 shares here, the profit was 2,414. So when you times that by four, overnight I've made 10,000 pounds. Now that may not be a life changer to most people, but to me, it was an absolutely unbelievable result. The best trading result I've ever had in my whole life. And it made me love Keith Gill even more than I thought was humanely possible. GameStop is a phenomenon. Extremely volatile, but so much fun. And until you've been invested in it, it's really, really hard to understand exactly what it means to people. And if GameStop ever were to hit around $20 to $40 again, I would definitely consider buying back in. Just because you never know when something like this will go off again. So as a result of this, I decided to take around £9,000 out of my trading account and move it into my ISA account, where I've invested in a few UK stocks that have been hit a little bit by Brexit, but majorly hit by coronavirus. And I think we'll get back to the normal share price fairly soon. And whilst I don't really want to talk too much around my ISA, at some point in the near future, I will do a review on it. So I'm going to move on now and just talk around the market as it is today, whether it's currently in a crash or a correction phase, and just try and get our heads around it a little bit and what we can do to mitigate any risk going forwards. So you may see the term crash being banded around quite a lot, but correction and a crash are very subtly different things. So in a correction, the 10% decline will manifest over days, weeks or months. And in a stock market crash, the 10% price drop occurs in just one day. And to follow on, these crashes can lead to a bear market, which is when the market falls under the 10% for a total decline of 20% or more. So where are we at the moment? What's happening? And how does it feel to me? So in order to do some analysis on this, I'm just going to head over to Trading212 and just pull up a few charts. Is it closer to the 10% correction or is it closer to a 20% crash? So here we are on trading two and two, and I'm going to look at the Amazon chart first, just to try and understand where we're at. So on the 22nd, it's important to note that it was quite a big drop off when the markets opened. We went from $3,202 down to 3093, and then it slowly rose back up again. But since then, it has declined down. Now, if we look at Nvidia as well, on the 22nd, it opened up around the 568 mark and dropped in session to 535, which makes me think there was a slight crash earlier in the week. Albeit the market seemed to recover pretty much fully on the day, mainly because it's been such a bull market lately, and I think the confidence is still there in places. If we look here at the Ixtel chart on the 22nd, which is this massive red candle here, you can see it opened up around $184 and then dropped in play to $1.12. So some of the small caps were massively hit during this session. And the day after it fully recovered and actually went higher than it had opened up the previous day. So even with that massive swing, it was an opportunity to make some real money on this. But again, the main thing to note here is it dropped more than 10%. And whilst a small cap obviously isn't any representation of the whole market, it's just important to show exactly what was kind of happening in the broader market, as well as massive stocks like Amazon and Nvidia. And following the Amazon and Nvidia trend, it's trended down all week. So it does make me think there has been a bit of a knock to the market confidence. But that said, do we think it's a crash or do we think it's a correction? In order to understand a little bit more, it makes sense to look at something like the S&P 500 just to give you some more context. So here we are on the S&P 500 chart. And from the 16th of Feb, if we just start there and go across, there's been a drop of around 3%. So that would indicate we're in correction territory, not a crash. And whilst as an investor, you may have seen your individual shares drop more than 3%, but an indicator like the S&P is probably better to look at to understand whether it's a crash or a correction. Because if we want to understand what a crash looks like, we need to go back to around the 4th of March when lockdowns were announced. And you can see here that it dropped a whopping 28.52% from March the 4th to March the 23rd, which is crash territory. So at the moment, 
My belief is that we're in a correction phase and not crash. But let's look at a few other indicators as well, just to understand exactly what might be going on. So this graph here is the probability of a recession provided by the New York Federal Bank. So this chart was last updated on the 4th of Feb 21, we can see here at the bottom. So you may have heard this week in the media, the bond rate being around 1.4% could be one of the reasons or indicators that there's going to be a stock market crash. So if we look here in 2007-2008, the bond rate was edging up over 1% and it spiked around 4%. And also, same in 2001, it was around the 1% mark when a recession was triggered. So in fairness, it is quite a good indicator, and it has given us some accurate results from the past. However, past results don't always represent what is going to happen in the future. So I think it's important to take note of it and plan your actions accordingly. And that could be doing something sensible, such as reducing risk in highly speculative investments. Because typically, if a crash does happen, smaller businesses are the first ones to feel it. So if you have a penny stock heavy investment portfolio, it may be worth reducing some positions just to mitigate any potential risk. And if you want to deep dive a little bit more into this chart, and get your head around it and understand it, I'll put it into the comments section as well so you can look at it in your own time. So one further point to consider in the US, which could have an impact over the next few weeks, is the stimulus package. So whilst I don't need to bore you with the ins and outs of COVID, we all know that it's impacted a lot of people. Some people have been unable to work and it's left them needing some much needed funding and support in order to do the most basic of things and just paying your bills. Now the stimulus package on Friday night was voted through by the House of Representatives. And you can see here the final vote tally was 219 to 212 and two Democrats broke ranks and voted against it. However, no Republicans voted for this. Now the challenges that may present in the future is that this now goes to the Senate. So let's have a quick look at the Senate and break down exactly what could happen there. So here we are just to have a quick look at the Senate and how it's structured and why this is important. If we look over here on the right hand side we can see there's 100 members in total and in order to get something through the Senate you need to have a vote of 51 to 49. As it stands the Democratic Party, which is Joe Biden's party who put the proposal forwards, have 48 sitting members and are most likely to get whipped into the fact that they have to vote for this, although two did break ranks in the prior vote. There's two independents, so I'm not totally sure which way they could go, but assuming for a second they're 50-50. And then there's the Republican Party, who have 50 seats. And again, just bear in mind that none of them voted previously to pass this. They were all opposed. Now this makes me think that when the Senate votes on the relief package, that it will not be passed, and that will have a negative impact on the stock market. Now I could be totally wrong, but using the facts and data from the prior vote, it's fairly easy to see a roadmap where it doesn't get through first time. Now that could mean that they have to go back to the drawing board and negotiate on other points to get the stimulus package passed through the Senate. Now the end result is any delays could put extra pressure onto the stock market with uncertainty. So right now what I'm doing to mitigate against any potential volatility in the stock market is I've set up incredibly low price triggers on stocks that I'm interested in. And if it hits them, then I'll buy. If not, I'm happy to wait. Right now, I'm seeing kind of 2 to 3% drops every single day. Now, I'm quite happy to miss out on one 5% increase if it means, equally, that I'm dodging a bullet and missing 6 3% drops day after day. Now, why is it so key that I don't want to lose money? Now, it may seem a fairly obvious thing. No one wants to lose money. However, if we look a little bit deeper into it, when you lose 10%, you have to make 11% back just to get back to the same starting point. And if we go a bit further down, and for example, say we had a 30% loss on our investments, we're looking at a 43% gain to recover that money. Now I'm quite happy to ride out a few of these rocky days with cash and not do anything and just wait to start seeing some green shoots again. And I see a lot of people saying that time in the market is more important than timing the market. However, I also think it's important to kind of back your gut instinct. And if you think there's going to be drops, and I do over the next week or so, then why would I leave my money in with the logic of thinking that it's going to go down? And I think while stocks like Tesla continue to falter, I'm quite happy watching from the sidelines. And as soon as I start seeing stocks like Tesla stabilise and start to recover again, then I'll be straight back in. And I may have missed out on a 5% rise, but equally, I won't have taken an 18% hit. Thank you for tuning in. That's it for this weekly roundup and look forwards. I will do this every single week. I haven't done one yet because to be honest, I'd only done a few videos, so it didn't make any sense to do it until we had a bit more to talk about. But with everything going on in the market, I thought this was a good time to start. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. I reply to every single person that leaves a comment. And if you did get something out of it, then please hit the subscribe button. I'm over a hundred subscribers now. So thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. It means so much. I really appreciate your support and helping to grow the channel. Thank you, take care and happy investing for the week coming ahead.